Oftentimes we have clients that will come to us and say, I have a short-term expense that's really significant, but I think I'll pay it off fairly quickly. What should I do? And today we want to explore home equity lines of credit as one option to be able to finance that short-term need. All right, so Spencer, today we're gonna to be talking about home equity lines of credit. And really they're not entirely complex, but the way that they're framed can make it sound like this is just an immense hurdle to get over. How do I even understand it? What is it? So walk us through just kind of some generalities. What is a home equity line of credit? Well, we talk about the verbiage first, home equity. So you have to own a home mm -hmm. and you have to have equity in that home. So the two pieces there, typically you have to have um, the value in the home that, that's fairly easy to uh, kind of put a, a pinpoint on. And then you need to have at least 20% or more equity in that home. So if you own a home that's a half million dollar home, um, you need to, to have at least $100,000 of equity, at least less than $400,000 on your mortgage um, on that home. Now, typically you need uh, to keep a much higher level of equity because if you apply for a home equity loan, um, the baseline is that they're not going to allow you to borrow between your primary mortgage and your home equity line of loan. You're not going to be able to borrow more than about 80% of the value. So really in that example, you'd need to have say $200,000 worth of equity and then maybe you could borrow $100,000 know, of that equity and, and, and have that on your home equity line of credit. Yeah, so essentially what it is, is you've got equity that you have invested in your home by paying down your mortgage, the down payment, mm -hmm. and you need finances for right. some home improvement, an emergency fund, some reason that's come up that typically is short term, right. but you don't have the cash on hand. And right. so you are borrowing against that equity that you've built up in your home. Right, and it's a line of credit. So you don't always have to be using that. It's not as though you take out the funds. It's not a home equity loan, mm -hmm. um, which t tends to be um, a second mortgage of sorts. So you might have your primary mortgage. You might've paid off that over a period of time. You could take out a fixed rate mm -hmm. home equity loan. And in that example, you might be able to take out another you know, $50,000, $80,000 of, of loan that's at a fixed rate there mm -hmm. that you would then pay off over time. The nice thing with a home equity line of credit is that you can pay it off very quickly. The terms are typically quite flexible. So um, from a use case standpoint, let's just say that you uh, found that you needed another automobile, but you knew that you'd be able to pay it off within three, six months, and, but you needed $15,000 as a um, to be able to pay it, um, you know, up front. Well, you, you know, you, you buy that used automobile for $15,000 and let's say you knew that the, the cash flow was coming over the next couple of months. Well, now you don't have to go through the loan process for an auto loan. You don't have to go through all of those underwriting standards. And um, depending on the interest rates, that home equity line of credit could be competitive, you know, with the auto loan rate that you're getting. So lots of different pieces to this, but the flexibility that is put in place by that line of credit can be quite nice. Yeah. So there's two parts typically to the home equity line of credit. You've got your draw period and the repayment period. So walk us through what is unique about that in, the, in this line of credit. Well, you've got a draw period, and typically in that period, a, a lot of uh, institutions that are making these home equity lines of credit, there'll be a 10-year draw period. So you can draw out resources. Let's say, again, your limit was $100,000. You could draw out resources, and maybe you, you pull out $30,000 you know, to uh, do something in a remodeling of your home, or you, you uh, have a short-term need for those funds. You pull those resources out. In that first 10 years, you just have to repay interest. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously our counsel would be, try to pay back as much as you can typically, yeah. not just the interest payment, you can pay principal in that period, but you're just required in that first 10 year period, typically to repay interest on a month to month basis or to make some kind of interest payment. Once you get to the end of that 10 year period, then it flips over and it becomes a fixed rate payment that you've got to pay principal and interest over some period of time. And it might be 10 years, 15 years, even 20 years, depending on the terms, but you've got to pay that off over time. Now, if you get to the end of the 10 years, and let's just say you have nothing that is on the home equity line of credit, then typically what folks would do is they'd work with their uh, bank or um, 
or their uh, credit union and put kind of keep that in place. They might have to have an appraisal of the home or they might have to just go back through the underwriting process, but they might keep it in place and not they might not have anything to pay off, but they still want to have access to those funds should they need them. Right. Okay. So walk us through maybe now, just what are the steps that you need to take in terms of actually applying for getting approved for this type of line of credit? Well, you need to have your documentation, you know, in line. You'd want to shop around. So uh, typically, we'd say, okay, you're researching and you're shopping around. You'd go first to any relationship that you already have with a financial institution, a bank, or credit union. Um, oftentimes, they'd have some kind of pre-application assessment that you would walk through. You would need to again collect all of the documents, um, uh, whether that be you know W two statements, uh, tax return. Um, you might have to help um, you know provide information related to um, some kind of um, appraisal of the home. Those kinds of different pieces, and and there may be mortgage statements or property tax assessments or other things. Uh, proof of the homeowner's insurance uh, would be typically one of those that they're going to make sure that you have all of these pieces that, that you would need to submit prior to them then reviewing things and making a decision of whether they'll move forward. The thing that you also need to make sure that you understand are the interest rates that are involved, how those work, and then the repayment period, like we talked about, not every home equity of line of, of credit is, is the same. And so, you know, you get to that end of that uh, interest only period. What does that look like? How do things switch over? Are you comfortable with the terms mm -hmm. there? Okay, so let's let's then talk about that interest rate because on a mortgage, on a traditional loan, mm -hmm. you've got a fixed interest rate. That's not true with home equity lines of credit. So talk us through the interest rate and why, it, how it's different therein. Well, every institution is a little bit different. The core structure tends to be variable in nature, which is obviously different than most home loans. Majority of home loans, if they're 30 year fixed rate loans, you know what your payment is going to be over the course of basically the entirety of, of that mortgage. Um, the insurance amount, the property taxes amount, if you're paying for those through the uh, mortgage payment as well, they might vary a little bit and go up a little bit over time. But generally speaking, that 30 year mortgage is going to be fixed in nature in, in what you're, you're paying off of, of the mortgage. With a home equity line of credit, it's different because you typically will have an amount that is above the prime lending rate. So, you know, the prime rate set by banks, the uh, bank or credit union, they're going to have some kind of spread above and beyond that. So let's say that the prime rate was 5% and they said, well, we're going to charge you 3% above and beyond that. Well, your home equity line of credit interest rate would then be 8%. If interest rates dropped and the prime rate became 3%, it was at a much lower place and you still have that 3% spread, well now you're at 6% that you have to pay. If the Federal Reserve decides that they're going to jack up interest rates and banks respond and increase that prime, prime uh, rate, and let's just say the prime rate is 8% and you still have 3% spread, well now you're paying 11%. Mm -hmm. So that variable rate of interest it, uh, it will move around yep. typically. Sometimes that can be in your favor. You know, uh, if, if interest rates are relatively high right now, relative to where that you think that they may be in the next couple of years, you may say, well, you know, I'm paying 9% now, but it'll probably be more like 7% within the next couple of years if interest rates come down. Mm -hmm. You can always be um, hit by the flip side though. And so you have to yep. be careful about how you think about those repayment rates. Yeah. Okay, so we've talked about interest rate, we've talked about the term. Let's just talk about when this can be an actual useful tool. Mm -hmm. So when in a financial plan can a HELOC make sense? Obviously, it's very dependent on your specific situation. So don't take Spencer and Austin said, hey, a HELOC is great for an emergency fund and then just go do it. Mm -hmm. But talk with your financial advisor. So what are some instances where it could be useful? Well, it, it can be useful if you're remodeling your home mm -hmm. and you think that you have nice cash flow and you'll be able to pay that back fairly quickly. So let's just say you're doing a $50,000 uh, remodel of a room or two and you think, okay, within the next year, I'll be able to pay this off. Well, you might not want to take out a uh, home uh, equity loan. You also may not want to try to finance that via credit cards. You may just not have other access to capital that is fairly inexpensive. And so this can be a nice uh, kind of middle ground um, in there. 
If you have another big purchase, you know, a vehicle purchase, and you, again, think that you can pay that off fairly quickly. The other thing is, you know, sometimes when expenses spike and we just want to have a little extra cushion. Now, we're always going to tell you have a primary reserve in place, three to six months of living expenses typically. Um, but there are some people that they'll have to replace a roof and an HVAC and a vehicle in the same year, somehow. So um, if you have uh, the misfortune of going through a, a McLaughlin type of year, you might like a home equity line of credit just because uh, that primary reserve even if you're going by the textbook, it may not be quite enough yeah. there. So you have that access should you need it. Um, so all kinds of different you know, things to consider there, but we wanna stay away from the 24, 25% that credit cards are often charging in interest yeah. these days. We much prefer, you know, even if it's eight or 9% for a home right. equity line of credit to have that option rather than just you know, rolling it over on a credit card for several months. Yeah, and the reality is, again, coming back to your point, if you've got the cash set aside to be able to do those repairs, we would always recommend use the cash. Right. And then if you need that home equity line of credit, just in case something else happens, right. let's say you've spent your cash because you needed to replace a roof, it's nice to have that back as you're replenishing that emergency savings because you've just liquidated it. Mm -hmm. It's nice to have in the background, but you also have to remember, this is not my primary reserve. Right. This is a secondary reserve that in case another emergency arises mm -hmm. that you can tap into. But we really want to say, stress that idea of if you utilize that cash reserve for emergencies, replenish it, right. cut your spending, re-aggressively put that money back into that emergency fund. So you're not always living off of that HELOC. Well, and that's the thing to a HELOC because it gives you more capacity to use credit. We have to be really careful with it. Yeah. It can be great if you have significant credit card debt and you have some home equity to slide the credit card debt over to a home equity line of credit because yeah. you're paying less interest. Yeah. The challenge is you can hang yourself with that. You can increase then the uh, home equity um, line of credit, the, the amount that you have against the home, mm -hmm. And you can still increase the credit card debt. So that can be a double whammy for you. Yeah. So it, this is one of these tools that can be great, but you have to use it with discipline yeah. uh, out there because you're putting your home at risk. Yeah. Again, you're putting your home at risk here. If uh, things go sideways and let's just say you lose a job or a medical event happens or other things, um, you know, if you if you have credit card debt, then it's much more difficult for them to then take your home, yeah. you know, for instance. But yeah. if you have a home equity line of credit and you uh, cannot pay interest, you know, with the bank, the bank may push you to actually sell your home mm -hmm. to make good on that home equity line of credit or mortgage. Yeah. So it's it's a it's a it's a higher stakes yeah. type of situation when you put your home um, as collateral. Right, and we would say that with all areas of debt. Mm -hmm. It's really easy if you start leveraging your life with debt to continue to leverage more and more and more with debt. And so whether it's credit cards, whether it's home equity lines of credit, mm -hmm. whether it's even just a mortgage, we want to say you really need to be very intentional about the ways that you take on debt mm -hmm. and not flippant about the ways that you take on debt. Right. So really consider this within that broad context of your financial plan. What is wise? What is a what is wise stewardship of the resources, not just to fund additional lifestyle. Right, and, and we even have to be careful here because there are some introductory rates that these home equity lines of credit can have. So your financial institution, whether it's a bank or credit union, they might uh, point out to you that, hey, we've got an introductory rate for the first 12 months of 2%. And you say, wow, that sounds great yeah. compared to the 24% I'm paying on this credit card. I'm going to move my uh, debt over here and try to pay it. Now, the thing is, you've again, you've got to be very disciplined about paying that because that 2% then can go to the reset value, which might be, you know, again, a spread of 3% above prime and it, you might go from 2% that you've been paying and you might um, not be paying off all that much or might just be paying interest. And then all of a sudden it jumps to 10%. Yeah. And that can be, really sobering, yeah. you know, in terms of uh, the amount of interest then that's required and, and you can get yourself in a very difficult spot because again, your home is being used as collateral. Yeah. And well, and this happened very recently. 
we look at 2022 to 2024. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're if you have a home equity line of credit in 2022, when the federal funds rate is almost paying pennies, mm -hmm. and then it jumps to five percent over the course of a couple of years, yeah, your home equity line of credit may have gone from three percent to eight yeah. percent almost overnight. Right, and so that pain can be very, very uh, pronounced there. Mm -hmm. So it's one of the last things we want to touch on before we close out today is the reality, if you do take out a home equity line of credit and you do draw off of it and you have enough other itemized expenses, you can itemize that interest payment if you're using it towards home improvement cost. If you take it out for an auto loan, you can't take charge the interest off as itemized. But if you are improving your home, then you can itemize that debt. Again, right now the standard deduction is really high, so you're gonna have to get above about $30,000 for most individuals if you're married filing joint to be able to start itemizing any of your deductions. And so if you don't have close to $30,000 of itemized deductions or 15,000 or so for single filers, then you can't obviously draw off that interest. But that is that can be a benefit for some individuals there. And we also have to recognize there's a cost to setting up a home equity line yeah. of credit. Yeah. So that's going to vary with every financial institution and the underwriting process and whether they require an appraisal or whether they can do a what's often called a desk appraisal, you know, where they use some kind of valuation that it's not off Zillow, but it's, you know, some kind of online uh, type of um, estimate. But I think we just uh, re-upped our home equity line of credit and it cost us $1,100 or something like that. And it's going to be in place for the next 10 years. So, um, again... You know, for us, it's it's more about just having that margin of safety, such that if something came in and it was unexpected, that hey, we can you know slide resources over there um, for a period of a couple of months, pay that off just as quickly as we can, and kind of move on with life. Um, but it, it's more of that safety valve for us that we think about having in place, and we've had one in place for more than ten years now, and it's just been you know one of those nice features if we ever need to tap into. Yeah. Well, thanks for walking us through HELOCs today, Spencer. If you have any questions, always take this information to your financial advisor, but feel free to reach out to us. Clients, we would love to talk with you about options that you have for home equity lines of credit or other ways to finance short-term debt. And with that, we hope you enjoyed this episode and we'll talk to you again soon. If you like these financial planning videos, please share with a friend. And if you have questions, go to our website at seriousretirement.com. This content was provided by Retirement Planning Services. We are located in Knoxville, Tennessee. You can visit our website at seriousretirement.com. The information in this recording is intended for general educational and informational purposes only and should not be construed as investment advisory, financial planning, legal, tax, or other professional advice based on your specific situation. Please consult with your professional advisor before taking any action based on its contents. Advisory services offered through Retirement Planning Services, LLC.